Well, good morning. Um, I've kind of pinched a day today. I'm only a few miles away from where I live. Dad's here. He's just setting up at the peg. He's getting comfortable. Looking down the dam here, this is Fleet's Dam. That's looking right down to the neck end to where you actually drive in. The peg I've managed to get today, I've never fished or pleasure fished here before. I've drawn this peg once before. It was actually in a match last summer. I think I ended up with 10 or 12 fish. This is peg 36. I've had a quick look on Facebook. Alan Anson, the fishery owner, puts the, uh, the results on. And I think the match yesterday was one on peg 34, which is obviously to my right. Um, with about 40 odd pound. I'm here today because I just want to try a few things out. The last time I was here I only caught one skimmer. That was the first match back out of lockdown and I think I could have done things slightly different. Um, the temperatures, well it's three degrees now. Yesterday it was really really warm. I was in my t-shirt all day yesterday. It was really hot and sunny. Last night it went really really cold so I'm going to be fishing a very very patient carp approach today. There aren't really F1s in here, it's all about proper carp. So that's what I'm going to be trying today. I'm quite confident we'll get one or two in the area that we've managed to get in. So like I said, it's a bit of a stolen day today. So in the bait bag here today, I've got a bait bag there that I use all the time. That's the cool bag, I'll be using that a lot this summer, but in here I've just basically got some bait that I've thrown in that was in the freezer. I've got some maggots, they are um, dead reds, but they're not actually dead, these are just dormant. These have actually been in the fridge, so I've got some of those. Dad's going to have some of those because I, I know he's going to fish with a method today. Um, I've got some pellets, these were really just in, in the freezer. Um, for sessions like this, you know, where you can use your own pellets, I don't like to throw pellets away just for the sake of mixing up fresh. I always mix fresh for matches. But for these sorts of sessions, it's nice to save what you've got. And I know Dad is going to be using some of these. These are just ringers. I'll show you the ones that I'm going to mix up fresh for today. And then I've got some ground bait here. Um, I think that's a dynamite sweet. I can smell it. It is. It's one of the silver fish. I think might be the betaine green or one of them mixed with um, just an F1 mix. I think it is. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but it's just, just some ground bait already mixed there. I've got uh, metal feeders already there that's all i need when i'm coming fishing like this there's a selection in there for everything as you can see so something to cover everything there um and i've got some pinkies there the reason why i brought those is just in case if dad decides to go on a cage feeder and just wants a few bites have a day's fishing then i brought in some live pinkies as well so for me it's going to be the method feeder so um it, i'm going to mix some pellets up and i'm just going to be fishing with wafters mainly i'm not quite sure how to approach the peg yet i haven't seen any fish rising or moving yet but um, the last time I fished on this peg, I caught 10 or 12 carp and um, I think I had 5 on the method and 5 on the pellet waggler or 6 on the pellet waggler. That was in about July, so obviously it was warmer then, but um, it might be a case of just picking a spot midway and then working my way out and chasing fish around the peg. I don't know, but I'm going to fish very, very, um, very patient today. Uh, I'm pretty confident, you know, we'll get a few. Now as regards the bait bag, I'll just quickly show you in here what I've got. Like I said, this is a cool bag, but that's not really an issue today. The sun hasn't come out, it's still very chilly. Um, I didn't know what to expect today. Like I said, it was very sunny yesterday, so I didn't know if the fish were going to be up in the water. So I have brought um, all my catapults. Okay, so I brought them. I've got, all right, eight mils, There's plenty there. I mean, that tub holds um, eight pints all together. That's what I'd always carry with me for a match like this. As you can see, it's not full, so it's probably six pints there or so, five and a half pints. So I've got those to ping if I see some fish moving around. I've got the pellet waggler rod with me, um, and I've got a selection of pellet wagglers as well, um, if the fish are up in the water. So I'm not going to set that up initially, because I think it's a bit cool for that. Um, so these are the pellets I'm going to be using. These are the ringer ones. Last time I was here, I used dynamite, the F1, sweet F1s. Um, but I'm going to be using those today, they're the Method Micros, so I'm going to be soaking those down. Um, might not look many there, to be honest, but in this tub, when that tub's full, oh, the bird's at it, um, 1.6 pints in that tub, so it's plenty, I mean there's probably, you know, there's a pint there easily, maybe a bit more, so there's plenty there. Um, and then obviously, as you'd expect, I've got some of the yellow glug that I have caught with here, one of my own little concoctions. Um, and then I've got a selection of hook baits, as you can imagine when we're fishing like this. It's 
great to have. Look at that, that's from last time I was fishing. Last time I fished it was the decoy Feeder Masters Qualifier, the first one of the year. And the last hour it just rained solid for the full, uh, for the last hour. Everything was drowned, and that's the first time I've opened them. There we go, so I should be giving those a little bit of a wipe down later. But as you can see, I've got a selection of, uh, well, there's mini wafters in there, some washed out, um, sorry, some washed out wafters there. These are all sorts, I think. Um, some dumbbells there, just a nice selection, and some pellets as well. I might start pinging a line that's about 20, 25 metres with a few pellets, and obviously to fish a hard pellet over the top of that might be the way to go, but we shall find out. So, rod and reel. All I'm going to do today, I'm just going to set one rod up, obviously one reel as well, and then just work around the peg that way, I think, and just see how it goes. I'll change that if there are some fish cruising about. So, I'm after carp. I'm going to be using, well, I'm going to try to see if I can find what we got here. That one's the, that's the pellet waggler, is it? No, nope, that's the one I need. So, I'm going to be using, I've used it quite a lot recently. It's the commercial 11 foot feeder. 11 foot, the maximum cast I've probably got here is probably about 40. 45 meters so I don't need a long rod I'm going to be using a method feeder so 11 foot is going to be ideal for that and I can use that to fish everywhere around the peg if I do get the pellet waggler rod out I've just got the 11 foot commercial pellet waggler rod out or the waggler rod um, but like I say I've just seen a fish rise so there might be one or two moving about but when I start pinging pellets I'll get an idea if that's going to be the way to go that's just got 3000 reel on it Really balanced, just nice that's all you need on an 11 foot rod a 3000 reel and this is this is actually Eight. It's got a number eight on there, so that is it's eight pound horizon main line. Just nice and, nice and durable. Just round to my right here, as you can probably see, there's a, a tree or a big branch down there. Well, it's almost a full tree. As you can imagine, any fish what's going to go that way, there could be all sorts under the water there. So just having eight pound um, reel line is a little bit more durable um, than if you were fishing with six pound line, which is what I usually do. So I have stepped up to eight pound for a lot of my fishing now. Certainly if you're fishing near to platforms and things closer in, it's just, just a little bit of a, an insurance policy. But we're going to get a, a feeder set up on here. We've got a fish free running rigs on here, so it's a free running feeder. Um, and then I'm going to get my bait sorted out. It's actually gone flat calm now, as you can see. I've just seen a fish rise at about 20 metres. It wasn't a big fish. It looked like one of the small stockies. Um, Dad's just about set up. He's going to fish with a method feeder. Uh, I don't think he'll go out long today, but I'll be interested to see what he catches there. No other anglers. I think there's, oh, there is. There's one angler just over there to my right. Um, but yeah, I think the maximum cast I've got here is about 45 metres-ish. So I'll be starting at about 30 metres and I'll probably just work my way out from there and just see what kind of reactions we get. These pellets are just about done now, I think. I'm not going to put anything on them yet. No glugs or anything like that. Just clean that water off. And they'll be fine, those, in 10 or 15 minutes. Like I say, I'll put the glug on later on. After we've actually, you know, seen if we can actually catch with just the, the naked pellet on its own. There we go, they'll be spot on those in 10 or 15 minutes. So rig wise it's free running, you've got to use a free running rigs here so it's a free running um, feeder. I'm not using an open style feeder to kick off with, I'm just using a normal method feeder. Only 15 gram, I'm not casting far, there's no wind and I think that'll sit really nicely on that soft bottom and that's obviously to a, a quick change uh, adapter there. Now hook length wise I'm just going to go really really confident so I think I'm going to kick off with uh, an MXC3 size 12. These are ones I've tied myself because these have got bayonets on them and that's what I'm going to start off with. There we go. So just kick off with that. Really nice, super positive. All 22 hook length. And that's what I'm going to kick off with. Just with some form of a wafter. Just on that bayonet. And with a size 12, you know, I'm pretty confident that, you know, the way I've tied these up, I'm confident that the fish is just going to suck that hook bait in and hook itself there we go 
really nice and positive. So all I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to kick off at about, about 30 metres. It's going to be really nice and positive. As you can see, there's quite a few pellets on there. Just kicking off with, they've got a yellow uh, washout on. I don't think I've ever caught on these on here before. So I'm going to start off at 30 metres. I'm going to be pinging pellets at about 20 metres, that sort of range. Only three or four at a time, just to see if I can see any fish moving. Obviously, I'm going to drop on that a little bit later on in the session. And then, right at the end of session, I'm actually going to drop this feeder round here to the right. Obviously, you can see that, that, that tree's in the water. It looks very, very fishy. So I'm going to drop a method feeder just down to my right later on in the end of the session just to see if I can hook one or two fish there. Might be a bit interesting if I hook any there, obviously, with those trees and branches there. But I'm just going to whack this out there. I'm not clipped up. So I'm just going to guesstimate roughly that sort of 30 metre range. And then I'm going to be pinging pellets while I'm sat waiting for any sort of, any sort of signs on this. There's no wind today, so I'm not really too concerned about that line sinking. I'm going to set the stopwatch, and I'm going to be leaving it in 15 minutes initially. I haven't seen any fish caught. There are uh, one, two, three, four, I think it's five anglers on the other bank that I can see within this, this bowl area. There's an angler around to my right, but I haven't seen any fish caught yet. That sun's just breaking through, which is nice. Um, and if there's any fish moving around, certainly on that pellet line, no doubt I shall see indications on the tip. Um, so I'm just going to keep firing three pellets on that. It's about 20 metres. I'm not going to go too far, which is obviously closer further back. But my line is actually going right the way through this loose fed line. But when I'm fishing the method feeder, if there are any fish moving around on that loose fed pellet line, then no doubt I will get indications on the tip, you know, I'll be getting liners and that sort of thing. So that can be a good indication that there's some fish there. So I'm just going to be really nice and patient, 15 minute casts and uh, pour myself a cup of coffee. Well, it's just been in 11 and a half minutes now. I haven't had a sign, I haven't had an indication, but I've just seen two fish rise well crash really right out in the middle you know it's probably an area i can't even cast to to be fair it's probably encroaching on on those pegs on the other bank but they were both in banging in the same spot right in the middle and i've just seen a, a fish turn about 25 meters to my right as well so this sun's coming out um, and at least we've seen one or two fish moving now so i haven't seen any any signs over this pellet line yet but what i'll do is next cast i'll just put you know, an extra five or 10 meters on, and just work my way out into that open water, just see if we can find a fish. Alan Hanson, the owner, has just come round for the day ticket money, and while my dad's talking to his tip's gone round, so my dad's into one now. I've been on this long cast now, I've been out there probably, I don't know how far that cast is really, probably about 45 metres, might even be 50 metres to be honest. It's been in there, while well, I've been messing about with things, it's been in that long. 30 minutes, I'm getting the odd little indication, there might be signs of line bites of um, fish on that pellet line, where I'm pinging pellets, I don't know, tiny little indications. Let's see what this is. I don't know if it's going to be a little stocky or a bream. Let's have a look what Dad's got. There we go. Rare treat. It just switched to maggots. A little stocky. Is that all maggots, Dad? Yeah. Two, dead. Two dead reds. Get out, little stocky. All right, I'll see you later. Lovely. Dad's off the mark. He's winning the section up to now. <laughs> Here's Alan. There he is. The sun's come out as well. Morning now. Morning. Morning. That one's on. Well that was a positive pull just out of the blue. Again odd little tiny little indication. I don't know if there were fish milling about on that shorter line but 
I've just switched to an intersize open method feeder and I've switched to a um, a yellow slim which I have caught quite a few fish on here with before but it's only small fish it means we're off the mark probably a little stocky I think there we go good way just looks in the middle of the bottom bottom lip which is great that's what we want to see there we go a chunky little fish just a really positive just pull where you saw the bite straight out of the blue oh the sun's out as well now which is nice so i've worked my way further out i've gone as far as i can possibly go to be honest with this setup so what i'm going to do is because i haven't had any other indications it's nice to catch on that on that setup what i'm going to do now is i'm going to have a look on that loose fed pellet line I think some of those indications I've been getting are actually from fish maybe milling about on that line or, or just passing through the peg but I've been building it up now for um, two hours now as I've gradually worked my way further out so uh, they've had loads of time for one or two fish to be milling about there so I'm going to leave this 20 gram intersize feeder on I'll just show you that in case you're not familiar with it just so you know what sort of feeder that is there we go there we go, free running. It's a, a 20 gram into size. Okay. And I might as well keep the yellow slim on as well. Uh, now we've caught a fish on it. That's all it is. Nice little yellow slim. Let's see if there's any on that on that short line. keep them pellets going in that's the main thing you know if they're coming to that plopping these eight mil hard pellets obviously going with a nice little plop and obviously that can uh, that can keep them interested if they're milling about you know but no doubt if there are any there i think i'm uh, i think i'm pretty sure i'm going to be getting indications on this line even as to them little stockies what are just milling around for those pellets so we'll soon find out Well, that's first cast on that uh, loose fed pellet line i thought it was just a little stocky when i hooked it positive pull as you saw but it does feel a decent fish it's just tried to kite down to my right hand side and obviously i don't really want it to do that um with these branches what are in the water so i mean this rod's got quite a bit of power this is the feeder version of this rod so it's got quite a bit of backbone in it so it looks like we've stopped it but yeah it feels a better fish this one just on one of the slims like you saw it's been in it's a bit in nine minutes so it's not gone straight round and a couple of tiny little indications i think there must be fish milling about as i'm loose feeding those pellets what are going in and um, they're just br you know brushing against the line we're obviously on the bite there's no mistaking it you know when you're fishing like this the fish hook themselves if your rig's working right so that's why they can be quite um quite violent quite exciting that's a better fish this one Plenty of energy, so the water's so cold. But well, this pellet line, it's had two hours to, uh, to to build up. So, you know, to get one first cast, it obviously it's quite encouraging. I was considering trying a banded pellet on the hook, which is something that I've got a hook length ready for that. So after all, they are eight mil pellets that I'm actually loose feeding. Fish have just gone on a bit of a run down this edge now. You can feel that against a bit of a branch or something just there, so I better watch that in the future. There we go, we've got him. Yeah, it's a good fish, a bit heavier than what I thought. Like I said, I thought it was a stocky when I first hooked it, but yeah, it's quite a chunky fish, probably probably, probably five pound I'd say. Not a long fish, but it's quite thick. Let's have a look at him. In great condition that one yeah it's good five pounds that one we've got plenty of energy in got a bit of 
sun on him as well, which is nice. Don't want to hold him up too high. So he's got quite a bit of energy. But that's great, really confident. But that's great, gives you loads of confidence in that line. So hopefully that will get stronger as we start feeding it more. Let's get back out there, see if we can catch another one. Off you go, mate. I've just put a tiny bit of that yellow glug in with these pellets. I don't know if that's made a difference, but like I say, I've been building this line up for two hours now. So you'd like to think that there were one or two fish milling about and hopefully feeding confidently. So that's it. I'll give this, like I said, that was just over nine minutes. So no need to rush. Be nice and patient and just keep pinging, pinging those pellets out there. So hopefully try and keep one or two fish interested. The little chicks are back, they're not very old. <laughs> I bet they're only a few days old. Dad's been trying loads of different baits, but he's just switched to maggot again now. He's tried pellets, he's tried wafters, not had anything. Caught his first fish on maggot. He's just put maggot back on again, and he's got a bream. Beautiful. But he's not just putting pellets, he's putting ground bait in with the pellets as well around his method feeder. And quite often that can be the way to catch the bream. I've just had an indication, a good pull while Dad was playing that fish, but it didn't materialise to anything, so I don't know if that's probably moved my feeder. It might have been a line bite, so I'm only going to give it that, this about another 30 seconds, see if anything develops. If not, I'm just going to bring it back in and go back out again, because I don't really want you know the feeder to have moved and the bait not to be presented properly but I'm definitely getting indications on that pellet line now so i think there's definitely one or two fish milling around um around those loose fed pellets that i've been feeding for uh three hours now well it's really gone quiet now i was getting some indications there but um, this last the last few casts i haven't had any sign of an actual fish there's been odd tiny indications but nothing suggesting this fish around the feed i'm going to keep that bait going in you know everybody i've spoke to have said that dad's just hooked one while i'm talking to you um everybody i've spoke to have said that you know it's really been fishing better later on now it's only just it's only just turned 12 o'clock so you know obviously in in certainly in match terms it's still very early but i'm just going to keep going i'm uh, I've been pinging one or two pellets down to my right where this overhanging tree is or where there's trees in the water. So I'm going to be dropping a feeder on in that area um, in a little while. But I'm just going to stick at this line, just keep some um, loose feed going in on this line. I don't know what dad's got there, whether it's another skimmer. Is it another skimmer or a bream or is it could be, be a little stocker? I'm not show sure yet. Skimmer, skimmer stroke bream on maggots again. Good old faithful maggots. Um, like I say, he's using a mix of ground bait and pellets. Um, so I'm just going to stick at it. I'm not going to change from this. I want to catch carp. So I'm just going to keep going on this line. Hopefully it'll get stronger as I keep feeding it. And then I'm going to be dropping close to this um, uh, this tree that's in the water where it looks a little bit tricky. But hopefully there might be one or two fish around them features. Um, <laughs> well this one's just almost pulled the rod in and it, it's got to be near the middle of the lake now and it's still going it's been in um, well 13 minutes on that pellet line um, and this is hell of a long way out now I'm not clipped up anyway so I could just bite wind on that but it's a long way out now and it's kiting round to, to the left feels very strange at the minute I don't know if this is far looked or not but I'm on the method you know you wouldn't normally far look I'm on this but that it just took off right into the middle of the lake it's obviously a big fish but I don't know why it's so angry <laughs> I haven't had a sign now for it's a good 40 minutes I haven't had any liners or anything I've just kept pinging three pellets in and this has just come out of the blue. 
if it stays out there in front of me i should be all right if it kites around to the right i might be in trouble because there's so much line out but let's just see if we can land him he's kited right down to the right now be careful here I just stopped him but he's got that much line out that he's only got to kite around a, a little bit and it's going to be going near those snags I can actually feel that it's it's under these branches here to my right I'm struggling here I think Looks like I've hung up on that uh, on that branch now. I think it's gone. No, I'm just gonna have to pull for a break. I think. Looks like the rig's come free. Gone. That was a very big fish, <laughs> but it's uh, it's won the battle. That was just on a mini. I actually switched to a. Uh, a red or a pink if you want to call it that um, uh, wafter just the small ones that's the first cast on on one of those um, but yeah that was disappointing well I've just cast this out it's literally been out there about a minute and I thought it was a liner but it just kept going and it's a fish. I don't know if it's a little stocky or what, but it's only been in about a minute, right on top of where those pellets have been going in. Let's have a look. There we go. Beautiful. Well, if you can catch fish in, in a minute on a method feeder, you can't do much, uh, much better than that, can you? I mean, that's as quick as you're gonna be. But there we go. Just looks in the bottom lip. Great big mouth on him. Look at the mouth on that. <laughs> Great big. That could almost swallow the feeder itself. Beautiful fish. Lovely scales on that. Hopefully it's going to get stronger now. You know, we've, I've been feeding this line for four hours now. I'm going to be giving it about another half an hour or so. See what happens. And then I'm going to have a look down this margin underneath these overhanging bushes where where I lost that big fish earlier but it'd be nice to have a little run of fish on this line now well that was a much more hesitant bite that just a couple of twitches and then it just moved the feeder I don't know if it's a bream this one yep it is it's a bream it just shows you never know what you're going to get on these places Hooked. middle of the bottom lip again as you can see lovely fish again on a on a red or pinky wafter lovely fish great condition that one it's got to be time to have a look down this margin now I've been pinging a few pellets halfway between these two branches so I've no idea how clean the bottom is there, it might be a bit of a mess so I might have to put the feeder in different spots until I find a clear spot but I won't know until I put a feeder down there. I've been feeding it for 90 minutes now so I'm going to drop a feeder down there and just see if we can snare something underneath these trees. And normally I'd set my drag fishing at such short range but as you can probably see there isn't any room there really where I want the fish to uh, to go off to. I don't want them to run because they're just going to run towards those snags. So it might just be a case of hit and hold if we're going to get any signs there. I'm just going to kick off with the same mini wafter, pink mini wafter. I'm just going to drop this where I've been where I've been pinging those pellets. It's halfway in between the two branches, so it might give me a bit of a chance to get a fish out if I hook one. But I don't know what the bottom's like yet. That's the first drop in there in that spot. There might be branches and things there, so I might have to move from that. But 
we'll find out as I fish it. And that one's on. <laughs> I don't want to let it run. It's not a massive fish. I thought it was a bream actually, but we've stopped him anyway. That was good, that's only been in about a minute. I see he's in the open water now. Interesting to see what it is and what size it is. Like I said, I've been pinging pellets down that margin for 90 minutes now. Plus it's the right time of day, it's the second or well, the last part of the session. And that's when you'd expect to catch fish short. And it's been nice and quiet there as well. All the fish I've played apart from that big one that I lost. All the other fish have not been anywhere near that area, so it's been a nice, quiet area. And obviously with the bushes there, the trees, there's quite a bit of shelter there as well. There we go. Middle of the bottom lip again, as you can see. Scrappy little fish, brilliant. It shows you that they're coming straight to it. It shows that these pellets are breaking down pretty quick as well, so they can get to the bait. Expanding, should I say, not breaking down. These pellets will not be breaking down. They're expanded and expanding from the feeder. There we go, nice and simple. <laughs> Alan's back again. There he is. His second, his second uh, visit of the day. He's just been for his jab, so he's all right. Second he, jab done, boys. He feels. Uh, I just looked round at Dad. Then my dad just hooked one, and I look back and tip's gone round. Can't believe it. Tip's gone round. <laughs> I think we've held this one. I'm sorry right. for coming straight to you, Teddy. The uh, <laughs> making it happen, love. Missed him out this time. <laughs> Ah, uh, these are some of the stockies I put in. Uh, yeah, they're brilliant. Uh, last year, then. Are they last year's? Are they? Uh, and and beginning of this year, there's some good fish on him, mate. Oh. He's in lovely condition, that one, Al. Oh, well. Oops, yeah. lovely condition, that one. Ah, yeah, they're bunny, aren't they? How big were they then when they were put in? Them, it'll, it'll weigh between <laughs> a pound and a half to two. Right. On scales. Yeah. lining up for it now just a few pellets each cast still on that on that uh, mini wafter lovely fishing well that's been a really hectic end to the session it's been great to see all those stockies lined up down that margin that we've been priming for that last part of the session hope you've enjoyed sharing this with us it's been a beautiful day dad's caught loads of fish as well it's just been great to be on the bank so if you want to see more videos like this hit subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time.